we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started this video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. This is episode 47. I'm Rob Scribner, or better known as Ranger Rob, your host. And uh, you can catch Easy Street on Good Talk Radio, um, also on Spreaker, and a whole lot of other platforms. Please take the time to go down to the description and check out all of our different links and uh, where you can find Easy Street and Good Talk Radio. And today, folks, I want to talk about a show I really like. Um, I wouldn't, I didn't think I'd actually like it. In fact, uh, I remember my kids were in, I loved these sh shows and I used to go, we're not going to watch a crazy show like that. And something out of the blue, just like, uh, caused Sherry and I to say, well, let's see what all this uh, talk is about, about this show called The Walking Dead. So, I, heck, it wasn't any more than like a year and a half ago. We started from season one, day one, and started watching it through because it was on Netflix. And uh, I believe nine or eight episodes were there. And uh, so uh, we started watching it. And uh, I found it absolutely fascinating. Uh, not only was the story interesting, uh, it takes a little bit of uh, imagination, um, but being a prepper, I found it to be interesting because The Walking Dead, obviously there's you know the zombie part of things and stuff, but really um, it's still, no matter what, and no matter what happens to us too and that's where my show's kind of like talking about the relationship between this show and reality and uh um oh what could be reality and it's really about i mean obviously there's the um, danger of what they call the walking deads or walkers um but throughout the show it turns out the most deadliest thing was other people <laughs> it really makes you think so uh, I want to talk about that today now I it, I'm not a doom and gloom kind of person but I also believe in being prepared and the one thing that makes us all susceptible to a real problem is no power losing a look um, across the board it would affect everybody um and that's so easy i mean it's only one thing of of all the the world if that one thing was to go away for some reason we'd be set back hundreds of years and uh you have to think about it i mean everything we do including this show is all powered by electricity and if we ever, ever lose that, we would be in a real world of hurt. <laughs> so it brings me to thinking of, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of believe in prepping. Um, I believe that you should be prepared if our grid was to go down or some other strange thing. I mean, obviously, the strangest thing we've ever had is this virus thing that came along. And who would have thought? A year ago, did you ever think life could be like this? A year ago, did you ever think we'd lose all of our freedoms and be locked locked in our homes? Did you ever think this would happen? Well, this is really nothing compared to what could happen. And so, brings me to The Walking Dead. So, yes, it is a television show. It's a fantasy show, not a true story. However, you know, um, they do bring out a lot of things that really is quite fascinating. Like when you uh, watch The Walking Dead, um, some of the main things that came up is uh, is food is the first thing. 
Uh, well, let's start with transportation. <clears throat> they start out pretty good where, you know, there's cars laying around, keys in them, and gas in the tanks, and pretty much they could type themselves a car anytime they wanted to. And they and they showed that to be kind of true in the first few episodes. And then as time goes on, um, that gets harder to do. Finding fuel, you know, they end up um, taking out other vehicles. <clears throat> and then over time, even longer than that, they show the fact that, you know, gas ages and over time it gets bad. And so they put emphasis on that. Um, and then when it comes to weapons and stuff, you got to remember nothing's being replaced. So if you have weapons and you have ammo, when you use the ammo, it's hard to replace unless you go to places and find it in other people's homes or old stores, or old drug stores or uh, old police departments, things like that. And then it's even more complicated than that because no matter what kind of firearm you have, you better have something that's fairly standard. So yeah, it was, it makes you think. So uh, I urge people, um, if you want an interesting story in, in the, the main Walking Dead show, there's another one called Fear of the Walking Dead. It's okay. Um, and there's some new one, things coming out, including some movies. Um, and I'm looking forward to every single one of them. And what I like about them is really, I mean, there's always the danger of the Walking Dead and the issue that um, there's, uh, I'll say, living beings, kind of, that um, are very dumbed down. Um, that could be an issue. And, and it really, they're more of an issue when they're more than one and what they'd call herds and stuff like that. So. Um, it, they tend to overwhelm and they're kind of like lemmings, <laughs> you might say. But the big thing was really interesting is, is at start, it was really about, oh, trying to find a place to live, kind of doing a community, kind of dealing with some people that were in danger or some people that uh, all they know about is stealing and, and not really contributing and uh, uh, dealing with that at first. <clears throat> Well, it actually just continues. But later on, as they build communities and stuff, and they start uh, finding enough food at different locations and stuff and starting to kind of prep a little bit and get their communities uh, uh, behind walls and things like that, and perhaps they uh, start growing things and they, t they really put the emphasis on learning how to grow stuff um, and then getting weapons. The problem is, is there's other places where other communities have developed. Some do better than others. So then when one community is having a hard time with resources and they find out there's another community with resources, then it, get in, it gets into a people problem. And one community wants what the other community has. And a lot of times they can't seem to work together. And that's where the drama comes in. And so um, it gets quite gruesome in some cases. And I, and I can add, actually picture a lot of this being true. Um, it's kind of a human nature in some cases. Uh, there's always, you know, and, and there's the other emphasis of the goodness of people. Um, when you do... Uh, um, get a community going, uh, your brotherhood becomes very strong. And uh, that's pretty amazing too. And relying on one another um, in so much different ways. The other thing is the development of people. You know, you know, let's say you're just a programmer or say you're a waitress or maybe you're an engineer. And suddenly um, the world is, is turned upside down. Suddenly, it's not how much money you make. Money is not even an issue anymore, which is really weird. It's all about resources and skills. And right now, our community, we're all into, oh, get the four-year degree and, and you're, you're good to go. And 
and stuff. And then we put the we push off the go learn a trade, go learn how to weld, go learn how to build things, go learn how to fix an engine, learn how to uh, be mechanical, how to build things. Those are going away. And uh, that's sad because when shit hits the fan, the most famous person, and I have a radio show called Ranger Red Rednecks for Rule the World someday. Yes, the best friend out there in a, in a walking dead would be a redneck. <laughs> Someone that knows to hunt and fish and build things and protect things and survive, make traps. And I, I can't help but like to watch, walk, watch The Walking Dead just for the fact that it shows the nature of people. And it wasn't that long ago that we were not this high tech. You even go back a hundred years and you kind of go, wow, rotary phones, what's that? And go back a couple more, 25 or 50 years, what's an airplane? And pretty soon, you know, everything's on horses. And pretty soon they have to discover also what horses can do. And, and because fuel is just, it's gone and they can't make any more. So I don't, I, I, I don't necessarily always push any particular show to watch, but if you want to know the nature of people and also get a glimpse of what the future could be, if we were to lose, say all of our fossil fuel, mostly our electricity, we are way too dependent on electricity. You know, they want to do social tracking. They want to do all these things with uh, internet and they want to do uh, um, crazy stuff. And with a blink of an eye, electricity has gone. It's all gone. Our heating systems, our lights, our gas pumps, our cars, most of those are elect elect electronic. If we had an EMP type scenario or a, a solar flare from the sun, which could be natural, not even by other people, we'd be in a stone age. We'd have to learn how to build fires again. We'd have to learn how to grow food. We'd have to learn how to do agriculture. We'd have to learn how to grow livestock, grow food, find water, find healthy water. We'd have to learn how to filter water. You can only take canned food from houses so long. And that's exactly what happens on The Walking Dead. As time goes on through the seasons, they make it harder and harder to find the simple resources of breaking into an empty house that has a pantry full of food and maybe a few guns in the living room, uh, in a back room in a little ammo and pretty soon it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. The resources are gone. Pretty soon somehow I um, have to realize that a knife, a spear, a bow and arrow, a crossbow are actually wonderful tools because they're renewable and reusable. It's really interesting. And it's a great way to set yourself back saying, what if, what if we get back put in that scenario they would say they actually say that over 90 percent of our population would die we couldn't get drugs anymore we have a lot of people on ventilators or we have people on uh, CPAPs and we have things uh, um, people with heart pacers and things unfortunately those people will perish people with uh they need certain drugs all the time gone they could find some of that stuff for a while, but pretty soon that ran out. It'd be really sad, really sad, but it brings out a whole new life of a different strain of people. Ones that learn how to use skills, people that learn how to, that communities are stronger than being an individual. In fact, a lot of preppers, uh, they tend to act like they're going to be lone wolves. And they'd be the first ones to go because communities that know that there's a lone wolf out there and they need something, they'll go after that guy or gal and take their stuff. 
Or you say, well, maybe I'll get a backpack and I'll, I'll uh, hit hit the you know hit the road and um, bug out. And all that is is if really things were bad, and you see someone walking down the road with a really big backpack full of stuff, you're gonna take them. You either say you either join us and bring your backpack, or you die, and we'll take your backpack. Because who would be hiking around with a backpack with stuff that didn't, wasn't precious? <laughs> it's like, why would you want to bug out? You're a walking target. Walking Dead will actually show you how cruel people could be to one another and how wonderful people could be to one another. You'll see them struggle with, with diseases and injuries. You'll see them struggle with faith. It's quite interesting. After years of research and countless hours of R&D work, teams were assembled, research was presented, and the idea was put out to the public. If this could be done, the world would be amazed. Outdoor life would be changed forever. Hiking, vacation, and camping would never be the same. They got the work, they started designing, they made the product, and it's here today just for you. Yes, Ranger Rob poopy bags are finally here. They're bigger, deeper, smell like lemon, and strong. Available at Amazon at low cost and free shipping. And we are back. I'm pretty sure that Ranger Rob poopy bags would be a, a traded commodity during shit hits a fan. Those little bags come in handy for everything. And uh, yeah, I mean, people would find those and go, hey, I'm hoarding these. So I'll trade it for food. So uh, anyway, I, uh, I kind of uh, wanted to put the emphasis on, uh, on things to think about. And, and if you ever needed something to kind of give you a good idea of... Uh, what a crisis could look like and what you may be up against. You may say, I'd rather be dead. <laughs> Just shoot me right now. Um, I don't know. I find it actually challenging. Uh, obviously, I'm not as young as I used to be. I'd be a young man's world in a way. But wisdom would be important. And also all the different skills uh, I have. Of course, I was an electrician. That wouldn't help, would it? <laughs> But uh, actually, I've done a lot of mechanical things. I've r actually raised my own birds, and uh, I actually have to, used to have a game bird farm, and I've raised turkeys. I've done all kinds of things um, that would be useful. Uh, I also know how to hunt and fish, and also fire. You know, use a firearm. So uh, I feel kind of good about that. I feel like I could contribute to a community. As a lone wolf, I wouldn't do very well. Um, not as strong not as uh, agile, um, probably would hold up to the elements as much. Think about living in a scenario like those in, in weather and dealing with that also on top of the fact that you've got the walking dead, you've got people you can't trust, um, you know, you got rain, floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, and you won't know they're coming. You won't know that ahead of time. Flooding. Um, wind storms, snow, ew. <laughs> or you could be in a place like, how would you handle a life like that in a place like Arizona where it gets to 110 degrees in the summer? Our resources are so different than the resources, say, up in the Northwest. It's crazy stuff to think about. But it's really interesting to actually see a show that obviously it's a fantasy show, but they try really hard to show the realities of things and things are gruesome too. But it's in a fact, in a sense could be real. Could you handle that kind of stuff? There is no PC world there. There is no being offended or racism or anything like that. It's survival. It doesn't matter what color you are where you came from, all it, 
matters is how you can contribute and survive with one another and help each other. In a sense, that would be kind of nice to see. I, I, I guess what drives me crazy is I know, especially at my age, I've seen lifestyles change so much. I mean, I used to, my father and I, we go hunting and fishing and, and we do all kinds of outdoor stuff and all that. And then I watch the newer generations and their idea of getting out and is being on a virtual game. And so many of them are, never go outside or hardly enjoy the outdoors. Not all, there's a lot, there's little exceptions to everything I'm saying. But in general, or getting dirty, and even with this new virus thing, all my my biggest fear is we're all going to be afraid of germs. And the human body is designed to uh, find germs, maybe even catch those germs, and then be able to fight fight it in the future once you're over it, if you can get over it. I'm seeing a dwindling. Uh, strength in humans in a way and also the sensitivity towards one another and the labeling um something like those kind of the things would be in an instant gone it wouldn't matter you could be like a really impressive hunter in a piece of what did you do for a li they wouldn't really care but what did you do before all this <laughs> you tell them uh i used to be a grocery clerk I mean, you'd be a whole different person, a whole different skill set. I just find that interesting. So, guys, give it a chance. Go check out The Walking Dead. And, and not only watch it for the entertainment, because it's very, inter and they do have great characters. And, and see what possible human nature of things could be. Some of it will be gruesome. In Walking Dead, it's obviously a lot of gruesome. But there's a lot of heartwarming things, too. It's like they deal with questions like, well, should I still have a family? Do you still want to have a baby and have kids in a terrible world that's gray? And then they kind of go through the rationality of it, too. And you'll see them, um, you know, people wondering, was this a form of rapture? It's amazing how they've addressed some of those issues. You may not like some of the answers or some of the solutions they came up with some of that stuff. But yeah, it's, uh, you can see people taking advantage of other communities. Kind of like a communist scenario where Another community overruns another community, but instead of wiping them out, turn them into almost a slave scenario where they provide food for that other community or they won't kill them. It's amazing. He's like, oh, I, I don't want to think about that stuff. Well, humans should always be visionaries, good or bad. If you're a family, as a father or mother, you're always going to think ahead a little. What if? Now we could have a little temporary step backs and maybe only go six months to a year and things come back online. But what do you do till then? Could you defend yourself? Because people will come and get your stuff. If you got a little stash, people will get your stuff. If you move around, people will want to get your stuff. To be out in the open would not always be good. Do you talk to your neighbors? Could you work with your neighbors? Could you get a neighborhood that could form a community? Or have you burned too many bridges? Maybe it won't matter after. Uh, suddenly, people you couldn't stand before because the guy drives a four-wheel drive and is, it's obnoxious, you know, all of a sudden, something bad like that happens, suddenly go, hey, that guy who's a redneck over there, I bet you he's a guy you should be friends with. Hopefully they don't hold grudges. 
So anyway, I'd love to hear in your comments, do you watch The Walking Dead? Would you watch The Walking Dead? Could you watch it for what it could represent? Or do you refuse to watch it because you refuse that life could ever be like that? And I have a news for you. Thousands of years, life has been like that. It's only the last hundred because of electricity, really. Do we live the way we do today? And can you say today, are we better people? Just asking. Would you like better radio with great talk shows and great music and less garbage? Good Talk Radio is your choice. We have great programming, great music, and a great attitude. We love our country. We love our listeners. Good Talk Radio. So here's a little secret, which is not really a secret. Our theme song actually comes from The Walking Dead. For those of you who watch, watch, watch The Walking Dead, you're probably giggling knowing where that song came from. But it's actually a very, um, it was actually the first time I ever heard that song was on The Walking Dead during a couple episodes. And they actually used it as a, a tool to kind of torture people. <laughs> so I torture you with it. Anyway, I always loved the name Easy Street. And it's like, what a great name for a radio show. So I adopted it. So that's actually where the song and our theme comes from at the beginning is a, uh, using uh, that theme music. It's not really theme music. It was actually a song. Anyway, uh, um, so now you know. And so um, what I like about Easy Street is we can talk about anything we want. I think the last show I did was actually more about the virus and stuff. But, um, you know, I never know what I want to talk about. But every once in a while I see something, hear something, and I go, wow, let's talk about it on the radio. So... Uh, here I am talking about a show I watch. I would have never thought I'd ever watch this show. I can tell you that for sure. Um, even my kids, one of my kids was really into zombie stuff and actually does filming. And it, it, actually some of the first films he ever made was some kind of remake of kind of a Walking Dead thing or a zombie thing. And uh, I just, I used to shake my head going, that kid's nuts. And look at me now, I'm eating my words. But uh, like I said, it's there's something to learn from this. And I would highly recommend one is uh, if you're binging, <laughs> I just gave you a whole bunch of binging to do. Um, it's an interesting subject. It's a little saddening. Sometimes it's a mystery. Like could it's, there's, it'll drive you crazy saying, well, could, there's no such thing as a could possibly happen be a walking dead uh, people or zombies. But that's not the point. It's uh, what kind of world it created. And uh, you have to use a little bit of uh, imagination with, with that part of it. But uh, could it happen? I kind of doubt that part. But uh, as far as that happening without The Walking Dead in it, that could happen. Let's hope not. But if it does or partially does, are you prepared? Could you learn a couple of things from The Walking Dead? My answer to you is, I think you would. So give it a try. So guys, thank you very much for listening to Easy Street. And you, once again, we're on Good Talk Radio daily. Uh, just go to goodtalkradio.com, check out the schedule, and you can see where the show is, or you can always... Uh, uh, follow us on Spreaker or several other platforms, and we'd love to have you. And don't forget to uh, maybe pick up a few poopy bags, donate to the channel at Good Talk Radio, help us out. Um, times are tough, and this stuff costs a lot of dough, and I hate asking for stuff, but at least we've created a product. We have hats for sale. Things like that would really help our show and our station and our YouTube channel. And I, I appreciate it. And I, if you do something, I'm, I'm telling you right now, thank you very much. So guys, have a great day. Be safe and avoid them walking dead people. Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye now.
Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.